Back with uh, Corey Yeoman, continuing on with our conversation about 1987. Kingsman 11 won 7 0 Northern Indiana Conference loss at Carmel High School in the uh, on that November 13th game, Friday the 13th. Hmm, what do you remember that game? Well, I remember a lot of crazy things that happened. I remember a uh, a player forgot his jersey on the bus and had to run back out and get it, and he was walking looking for the jersey on the bus and stepped on Coach Klinger, who was laying on the bus because his back went out on the way up that night. You know what I mean? He let out a scream and he thought he killed thought he killed his coach. There's one kind of humorous thing, but you know, Ty, you know, Ty Galloway, a uh, great corner for my dad. Uh, hurt his arm, broke his arm the, the week before, and, and tough, you know, tough players. His dad's a legendary, you know, high school football player and collegiate football player only. And uh, weren't able to play in that ball game. And, and uh, Tony C. Mack, great tight end, went on to you know to play at Louisville and and had to play defensive back as well and had to play for Ty as well. So you know, I mean, that was a close ball game. We had our chances again, but you know, it had been it had been great to have Ty in there too. But you know, we had a guy who was going to Louisville playing his position, so that was nice as well. Okay, we're going to move on to 1988. 1988. Uh, uh, you guys open up uh, once again uh, a 19 to nothing win against Mishawaka at Mishawaka. Start the season with uh, four, four straight shutouts. Once again, the defense has just gone crazy here. Uh, it wasn't until the game against Fort Wayne Northside on November 4th, which was the last, the only loss of the year, uh, that you've given up any significant points. Northside beat you 27-10, but up to that point in time, uh, you hadn't. Uh, you've given up 27 points total, so it's very similar to that 79 group where you beat the crap out of everybody, and then lose a heartbreaker on the road at Northside. So, what do you remember about the 1988 team that went unbeaten in the league? Well, tough physical team. I mean, they were tough, and and uh, uh, you know, making a run through the NIC and, and 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 being undefeated and doing all those kinds of things, but then running into a heck of a North team as well, at Fort Wayne North. I, I still don't know. And, and, and there seems to be some discrepancy. We're, we're wondering if Fort Wayne North actually does have buses. Uh, we actually had some people try to take some pictures of buses because we've never seen them on a bus before because it seems like we always had to play at Fort Wayne North. All right. You look I do remember that Fort Wayne North, another crazy thing uh, that happened some, that right, night. Let's talk about that, that Fort Wayne North side game. Well, I can remember one thing. We're, we're yeah. driving up to the, I think that game, that game or the one before, and uh, our school bus driver uh, rammed into the side of, I think, one of the students on the way up with the hit with the school bus. So it was one of the Greyhound buses. So I think that was, you know, that's why we started the night, I think. So. All right. Let's move on to 1989. How about this group? 13 and 1. 7 and 0 in the Northern Indiana Campus. 5A state runner up. All right. Let's. So let's Talk about uh, the expectations going into 1989 after a really disappointing loss, uh, as you alluded to, on the road at Fort Wayne Northside. Uh, expectations, as you alluded to, are for the position, not necessarily the player, but I know how coaches are. They've got their little board during the offseason trying to fill in this guy here, fill in this guy there. So did you anticipate, in hindsight, that the 89 team was going to be playing its last game which would be for the state championship. Would you have bet on that? Well, I wouldn't have bet against them. Well, let's put it that way. Um, I mean, let's, let's be honest. To, to get to that point, to be in the pinnacle game, uh, everybody wants to be in that game, and that is hard to do. And, and uh, naturally, uh, you know, there's people that say luck has nothing to do with it, but to be honest with you, staying healthy and making a run like that, being healthy, luck has some... some Something to do with that's for sure. A uh, great group of guys, uh, you know, had, had some great playmakers. You know, you, you have a, a Jeremy Lowry, you know what I mean? A guy like that. You have an Aaron Winbigler, the, the big middle guard, and Wes Weimer and, and, and Kent Wickham, and uh, Mental Attitude Award winner and a coach for us right now, Eric Klein, as a, as a linebacker, and, uh, you know, Chris Baldwin back in the secondary. I mean, just just on both sides of the ball had guys that could that could make plays and, and, and could do things and uh, uh, you know that's that's probably one of the exciting parts about playing on a team like that with a group of guys like that. Once again you find yourself on the road at Fort Wayne North uh, a 10-3 to 3 win uh, obviously 
after losing to them the year before. How sweet was that bus ride home? Oh, it was great. I can remember a reverse, you know, I mean, we were scouting stuff and just different things. I mean, th there's so many crazy things that would happen at Fort Wayne North. There was one game at Fort Wayne North that Chris forgot his coaching shoes and, and he was wearing flip flops or his tennis shoes in the sideline. and, and uh, the mud game came running down and was slipping and sliding and he's yelling something at me and Donnie on the sideline and just slid right by us when we had the defense ready to go out in the field. We looked at each other and said, nothing you can say to that ah, guys, go out and stop him. So, and, and then watch Coach Giesman slide across the sideline at us. So, there, there was another crazy thing that happened there at Fort Wayne North and, and uh, uh, you know, I mean, you know, when you beat them, uh, Coach Dorfler's team, you know what I mean, were well coached, very athletic teams, and, and, and again, another another great run there as well. All right, then you back it up with a win uh, at home against Northrop Snyder. Uh, then you go on the road and win at Lafayette Jeff, and then your good friend, my good friend, your good friend, the November 17th game against the Valparaiso Vikings uh, at uh, Freed Field. A uh, really formidable postseason run there for the Kingsmen. Well, I mean, you know what, great group of guys again. I mean, you got Jeremy Lowry's or, or you know, or Jeremy Lowry in the backfield. But you look at those, you know, Jeremy McCaskill, our center, who's on our staff right now. Brian Griman's our quarterback, who's on our staff right now. So you got great guys with great football minds as well. Chris Baldwin, who coached at Carmel after he left us. I mean, just from a football family as well, with, with being around Coach T. Garden for all those years. I mean, so we had some guys that knew the game inside and out, and were real football junkies, and that, and they they, they liked each other's company and played very well together. Um, you know, playing hockey in that game, and that was a snowball game, and there was mm -hmm. snow on both sides, and it was, uh, it was a whiteout type conditions, and and uh, again, a guy that uh, I got to know uh, early on after after my senior year, playing in the North South All Star game, Coach Hoffman was was the offensive line coach, and Heaven and I played in that game, and naturally had been an offensive lineman, played with him, but just a guy that really, you know, kind of drew you in because uh, he's excited. Uh, mm -hmm. He's very, you know what I mean, he's a players type coach. He liked to talk to the players and get excited with the players and, and have a, a ton of respect for him. To be honest with you, we talk about guys like Coach Hoffman. I can remember when, when I was coming out of Miami just in case, you know, things wouldn't work. If, if something would happen and Penn would close, that's one of the guys I talked to, other than naturally Coach Giesman and the staff at Penn. I went and visited Coach Hoffman uh, before I got the job at Penn that summer. You know what I mean about what I should be asked, what I should be doing, what makes a good coach, and, and again, that's what I feel how I feel about Coach Hoffman. And and I, you knew their guys were going to be tough and physical. You knew they were going to everybody was going to be in the right place all the time. And, and let's, let's face it, that was a heck of a football team they had as well. And, and uh, it was a great win to to get to go to the next level. All right. Ten to seven loss uh, against to uh, to Carmel on the twenty fifth of November. What do you remember about the this? Uh, you know, number one, getting the state championship game, and then you know losing by really a, legitimately by one play. Yeah, I mean, you know what we we had a great you know Steve Carter, great great outside linebacker for us, and a great punter. And, and to be honest, I like out punted the coverage once, boomed one back, and they they had a nice return and and. Uh, uh, we were able to stop them down there and, and force a field goal and, and uh, uh, just miss, you know, coming off the edge and, and, and getting a finger on that, and they, and they made that field goal. It was a, definitely a defensive struggle, uh, you know, back and forth, back and forth, two physical defensive teams, uh, you know, so, but it was great to get there. Uh, you know, my coaching career, my, my, you know, the first time to actually uh, get to the to the big dance and and uh, in an atmosphere like that against Coach Belden and, and his legendary staff as well and, and uh, uh, played a heck of a ball game just came up a little bit short. Okay, let's move on to uh, the year which is 1990. Kingsman go nine and one, a loss in overtime in the first round of the playoffs again. The culprit, the Snyder Panthers in Fort Wayne. The, the the regular season, you guys ran rough shot over everybody, Corey, in this one. Uh, the you guys were in the midst of this uh, generational run of going through league play. Um, once again, you just I, we could see the 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 shift in talent and the division between Penn 
because now I'm in the mix now I remember this distinctly how the paradigm shift of the Penn coaching staff being there together and all those guys and some of the changes going on in the South Bend Corporation so there was a you guys didn't treat it differently but there certainly was a difference in the way things were their schools were kind of you know going off doing their own thing and yet Penn was building and building and building so uh, long story short uh, you guys just ran over everybody in league play there well how, how does that happen I mean I think it starts at the top I mean uh, you have a superintendent like Dr. Spiker um, who hires a, a guy like Coach Giesman that that hires coaches and gives them authority like that Hall of Fame staff that, that he had and uh, uh, and gets guys to buy into the system, the Penn way, uh, and and do it the way we do it. And and I think if you have that administrative support, the community loved it. They bought in. They fed in. They. They love the game of football, so I think all those key things, all those things had to come together to form that perfect storm, which is Penn football. There was one game that, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, the September 14th game, the 14-13 game against South Bend Washington. Was that the, the lights out game mm -hmm. where the lights went out? Yeah. Can you talk about? Is that the great game? Yeah, yeah. Right, let's That's talk Bobby's, about that game. Bobby's team, and Bobby had some guys. Now, I mean, they they had a. Uh, you know what I mean? A quarterback, the Wood kid was a playing quarterback. Yeah. Had a heck of a team. They made a great run. And um, you look at it, and it seemed like every year the Northern Indiana Conference. I mean, we're making this run, and every year, every year they had an outstanding. You know, there would be somebody in, in that city that was was outstanding that we'd have to beat. It would change from year to year, but different coaches. And and Bovey had a hot hand and, and was building a great program there as well. And. Uh, we had a heck of a game at Penn, and, and uh, I, can, I can remember after the end of the ball game, after we won that ball game and the lights going out and what took place, it was just, it was, uh, it was a heck of a win and a heck of a game for everybody to see, or not to see if, if you couldn't see when the lights were out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 1991, another magical year. 13-1, and 7-0, the Northern Indiana Conference, 5A state runner-up. Lost to Coach Delahan's national championship team, if I recall. Yes. 1991. That that team was that team was loaded. All right. So once again, uh, after a, the overtime loss against Snyder the year before. Yes. So you bounce back. Uh, I'm trying to remember because I don't have my notes here. Uh, heavy graduation losses going into '91. Or did you have a lot of guys back? No, we had some, we had some we had some guys back. You know what I mean? Back and forth a little bit, uh, but but. Making a run like that to be able to run off, you know, 13 straight ball games and, and, and then play a team like that, uh, uh, they were unbelievable. And there's a reason they're a national champions so that they're very good. And, and uh, I can remember the first play, one of the first plays of the ball game, um, Leininger, our, our leading tackler, an inside linebacker, uh, tries to make a tackle on, on uh, I believe it was Hogan. Um, and it hits him in the backfield and he takes off his scores and Geese goes, what happened? And Donnie said, we just had the perfect defense score. We knew what the play was going to be. Our leading tackle went up the, the field to make the tackle on their kid and he ran right through him. So we kind of knew it was going to be one of those games and they, they had a heck of a team. And again, but that started that, uh, that rivalry with the guys from Ben Davis and other staff that we became very close with. One neat thing about this year for on, on the Penn side of things was the fact that uh, not only did you beat rival Mishawaka 42 to nothing in the regular season, but you were able to go to the state championship game by beating them 41 to nothing to get to the state championship game. And of course, this the rivalry with Mishawaka, as Chris calls it, the, the grocery cart game. Always a unique dynamic. Was that uh, was that always a little bit more? T um, fun to beat the cavemen in, in this situation? Well, I th it is, I mean, because you know the rivalry and you know the guys. And to be honest, I, after you graduate, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger because most of the guys, you, if you live in this community, the lines intermix and, and where the guys live at and who your friends are. And, and I've got a lot of friends right now that, that I played against that played for Mishawaka, great friends. And, and uh, you know, but 
you know, it's like Geese always like to say, you know, on any time the rest of your life, if you're in Martin's grocery store, you know, shopping, and, you know, if you happen to, happen to accidentally smack somebody's grocery cart, you know what I mean, and wink at each other, they're going to remember that ball game that you played in. And, and uh, I mean, there's been some great, great ball games. And, and Coach Smith, Al Smith was a head coach that year, made a great run with their guys and got those guys into a Final Four game against us. And, and uh, uh, you know, it was... Uh, that came out well for the Kingsmen. You know, you, you talk about the, the the defense. Eight shutouts in 1991 for this group of guys. Uh, who stands out in this group? Well, Reisner. You think about Reisner. Right. You know what I mean? Brian did, had a heck of a ball game. You know, Kevin Lemmy back at you know the safety position did a great job. But I mean, there was. I mean, naturally, every team. And, and again, those guys would. You know, I mean, all those guys would come back and tell you. You know, it's a team game, and we we played it well together. But. Uh, we had some guys that, that stood up and made big plays in all those ball games. All right, let's shift over to 1992. Uh, Kingsman go 10 and 1, 7 and 0 in the Northern Indiana Conference. Uh, lose at home, 28-14 to the Snyder Panthers. It seems like we're running into the same kind of theme here: Ben Davis, Carmel Snyder. I guess that's a. I guess that tells you what you need to know about Indiana high school football at the big school level, is that those schools that are still dominant here in 2017. Or dominant in 1992. Programs are programs. All right, Geese. What's what's different a program and, and, and a great season? I mean, it, there's times when you'll have a great run of talent that, that everything kind of works together, and uh, you'll have a great season, a flash in the pan. I mean, something very special happens, and that's outstanding. Uh, but to do it year after year after year. That's the, the, as, as Coach Keith said. That's the definition of a program and a, of a tradition, and that's what we wanted to build. Anything jump off the page at you in 1992? Well, at five shutouts during the season, um, beat, beat Elkhart Central. One at Fort Wayne Northside. That was a good one. Yeah. One at Elston, 58 to nothing. One Elkhart Memorial, 49 to nothing. The closest uh, game during the regular season probably was that 24 to 15 win at home against Elkhart Central in '92. And the last ball game was against the Snyder Panthers. Yeah, that's that's what stands out to you. I mean, that's the that's the curse of Chris has an unbelievable mind, and and uh, I mean, it's do you remember the last game of the season? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, win or lose. Yeah, and those. I mean, you know, if you've been fortunate, you know, to win, you know, at Penn and uh, be on some great, great teams. But uh, um, and I, and I always have a hard time with this. I mean, trying to you, you remember the the losses. Oh yeah, right. a heck of a lot longer, and and then you do all the wins and the championships. And Chris would try to say it to me when when. Preparing, you know, when I was getting ready to become the head coach, and, and uh, he said, you, "You need to have, you need to take some time and celebrate all your accomplishments and what you have done. Um, not just trying to get the boys to do that, but do that yourself as well." Um, I don't think I've accomplished that. It's still, those the games you lose still haunt you. Uh, you think about, you know, different things that, that you know maybe you could have done or what, whatever. Uh, I'm not saying necessarily second guess yourself, but you know it's just you, you remember the losses. Moving on to 1993. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Before we get going here, this is the game against Homestead. Was this the game where Chris was talking to the kicker, and this is the first time I heard Chris openly say to himself that you know uh, what I thought a kicker goes through versus what the kicker thinks. Is this not the game? No, it's not the game. This okay. is the, that's a 99 game okay. over there. Okay. Yeah, so that would, okay. That, that, you know what yeah, you're 98. Getting? Yeah, thanks, Matt. So you, you know what, okay. So yeah. I'm going to remember to come to that. I just remember, yeah. uh, it's the first time I heard Chris say, listen, I really screwed this one up. I mean, he was openly admitted to me that, about that, so I thought that was really kind of cool. Well, there's more stuff that happened to Chris in that ball game. And in that game or in this game? That game. Okay, and well, we'll talk Dad, about it. And Dad would not that game. Alright, so we'll uh, talk there's, about that. There's lots of what happened in that game. Yeah. Okay, 93. Uh, started the season off with a win against East Chicago Central. And if I'm not mistaken, that would have been David. Was David yeah. Goski yes. the coach at East Chicago yep. at the time? 
He was there, yes. And, and they, they were pretty good. They were pretty good and had, had some success. David got them rocking and rolling there and they had the new weight room, one of the yeah. first teams in the, you know what I mean, that had the brand new weight room facility off, yeah. off campus and, and uh, uh, you know, kind of following the lead that, you know, in, as far as the strength program, everybody's playing catch up to Hobart over there, you know what I mean, in the strength program, what Coach Howard had done, I don't think, you know, I don't know if he ever can catch up to him, but that's, that's, uh, they had a heck of a ball club. Yeah, Dick Patterson was the coach, strength coach there at the time. All right, um, what, what do you remember uh, about this one? It was a tight game against Mishawaka in the middle of October, 46-24 uh, win there. But for the most part, uh, up until the Homestead game, which was the season finale in the first round, um, it was just, you know, you guys took care of business again, 10-1. and one. Well, we're, we're getting to a point now in, in this run right here, which is kind of a unique run. We had we had some great guys, and, and in that group, the uh, we're talking about 1993. 93. You look at that 93 and that 94 team. We have Rosenthal's on the team for a couple. McCullers are on that team. Dykus on that team. There's some great, great guys that are juniors on that team. Uh, you know, a tough, tough loss that you know what I mean to Homestead. Um, yeah, just. You know, again, that ball game running some some in plays, not being able to stop them a couple times, and, and after having some of the success we had, and, and uh, uh, you know, it's that, that was a tough loss with a, with a group of guys that we thought were, were, were and we knew and that were excellent football players. This was really at the time you mentioned Rosie. Uh, Rosie, uh, you knew going in as a ninth grader that this kid was physically. Um, I don't want to say a freak of nature, but I mean physically, he was just well, bigger, this, stronger. This team too. Yeah. I mean, Dreisbach's our quarterback yeah. on this team. So yeah, yeah, two, yeah, two yeah. guys that end up playing in the NFL. NFL. I mean, I mean that's that's a that doesn't come around every day. And right. uh, you know, Scott's a senior that year, and Rose is a junior that year, and, and and there's some other good guys around him as well. But so that was a tough loss. Kerry Cavasini, coach yeah. at Homestead, yeah. I think. Yeah, uh, remember you right. Uh, what do, you, what do you remember about the end? Let's just talk about those two guys because they had two of the best careers in the history of Penn, and I, and I talked to Rosie about it, but we didn't win. That's what Rosie, that's what Rosie after all the things that exactly. he talks about, he talks about 14 years in the NFL, he talks about playing at Notre Dame, the whole nine yards is the thing that he remembers the most now plays that he's a high school he coach. Plays in the Super Bowl. And yes. Yeah, yeah. And he, but he wants to talk about Penn High School football. Yeah. So what does that tell you? Well, that's... That's what it is, and and uh, I think all the NFL guys were the same. And, and um, you'll capture this in the interview. Um, Penn's a special place, and the experience that 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 our guys have. And trust me, I'm biased because I'm one of them, one of the long black line guys, and, and it, it is just different in what you think and how the experience evolves between the time you're an elementary kid. To a junior high kid and that close, and going to all different middle schools, and then the experience you have for those three or four years, depending on what area you went to school. There, whether it was a four-year school or a three-year school, uh, it is a, it's a it's a special place. And to a man, every guy that I know that if our guys had went on and played in the NFL, uh, their the, the experience they keep coming back and talking about over and over again is what it was like to be a Penn Kingsman.